Hi YouTube, this is Felicia with Bible Scraps and welcome to another episode of Craft, Create, and Chat with me in no particular order. It is a nice Sunday evening, March the 4th of 2018 and I'm in my craft room. As a matter of fact, I've been in my craft room all week. <laughs> okay, so several years ago, I started a laminating series and I got some upcoming laminating videos to share with you guys that don't really involve laminating sheets. You are looking at the Mink Machine, which some crafters might say it's a glorified laminating machine and that might be the case, but I have to say I've been playing around with the Mink Machine and with my two laminators and I actually prefer the Mink Machine and You'll learn why in an upcoming video, but this video is all about paper napkins. Many of us crafters have paper napkins, not that we use to eat with, right? <laughs> That's what napkins are for, but no, we use napkins in our art projects. And it's really cool because the prints you can find, goodness, you can find more pretty and certain types of prints and napkins, more so than in scrapbooking paper and in probably fabrics. And you can get napkins at a very good value. The regular price for this whole pack was $3, but at Tuesday morning, they have a lot of napkins on clearance. And so I forget how much I saved, but even at $3, that's an excellent price because you get so much. And napkins come in different sizes and they come in different themes. Oh my goodness, every season you will find napkins for the occasion for the season. But because napkins are so delicate, they're so fragile, using napkins in our art project, well, it's limiting. Um, we use napkins in decoupage, we use napkins in collage, but outside of that, I don't think we really use napkins. Now, I know some of you guys are really creative and you have figured out many ways of using napkins. Well, I have a cool technique, so super duper cool, that will allow you more options in using napkins in your project. And it may involve using a laminating machine, but you don't need a machine. Okay, so I'm gonna turn mines on. It don't take long to heat up. Now, um, I'm gonna show you a couple of examples. Well, you know, first let's start off with the napkin. This is a pretty napkin. And by the way, I got rid of a lot of napkins during the summer because I started to, I'm not gonna say hoard them because I didn't, I mean, I didn't have that many, but I was beginning to hoard them. I probably had 10, 15 packs and I thought, no, I do not want to start hoarding napkins. <laughs> and I didn't see how I could use them. And so I kept a couple packs and donated the rest to the Goodwill or a thrift store. Now, um, this is a really pretty print and I learned a tip, I think in a video or on a blog. Napkins normally have at least two different layers. Some napkins may have three and four and it could be a pain in the butt trying to separate the two what you can do is take a piece of tape and watch how easy it is to separate the layers. Now, depending on how many layers you have, that will determine how much tape you use. But you just grab a corner, oops. Now I was gonna say, this, this is, is really not difficult, but whenever I'm on camera, it's always a hassle, right? So this particular napkin, I think only has the one layer. Let me try, try it again. So what are you guys up to? What are you guys creating? Today, I went thrifting. Oh, you know what? 
Would this be a second? Oh, it's a second layer. Okay. So what I'm going to do is try to pull this. Okay, here it is. Once you pull back a corner, take your time and peel back the whole sheet. You know, as fragile as napkins are, they still have a degree of strength. I mean, the top layer didn't even tear at all. So I think, I think I'm good. So this napkin had two layers. Now you could keep this and use this in your craft room <laughs> or you can use it after you eat, right? Or while you're eating. Okay, so yeah, today I, okay, so I found a thrift store about a month ago and fell in love with it. I hadn't been there in a couple weeks when I first discovered it. I went back the next day and then went back several days later. And let me tell you, well, thrift stores, I have several thrift stores that I go to, um, you know, that I visit often. And there's a different reason why I visit each store. At this particular store, I have lucked out and found a lot of dresses. I don't know the proper names. It's Indian attire. It, it's the top and the bottom, and I don't know what those are called. But this store, they always seem to have a lot of Middle Eastern outfits. As a matter of fact, in this video, I'm gonna show you one. <laughs> and so I went back today because I was looking for more of that type um, you know, of clothing. Because I'm going to recycle and repurpose it, I want the fabric. And oh my goodness, today was a good day. I'm going to share a thrift and junk with me video in the future. So that's what I did today. And I went to church too. And I went to Costco, my favorite store to visit on Sundays. My kids, a memory they will always have on Sundays after church, we always went to Costco. And you guys, I am so bootleg. Let me tell you how bootleg I am, okay? <laughs> I love Costco for many reasons. But the tasters, let me tell you. <laughs> and I'm the kind of parent, I let my kids go back over and over and over again. They're either in front of me or behind me because I'm in that line too. <laughs> I always tell them, you guys, if, you, if you're going, if you're a repeat goer, always let whoever is there go first. But um, that's how we have lunch. The Costco tasters. <laughs> and Costco, they're great because they're, um, what do you call those people that pass out the taste, taster givers? They're always polite. They don't mind you going back over and over and over again. But because I'm wearing a Visaligners, you know, I, I can't eat the tasters right now. So the last month, I have been without my Costco tasters. <laughs> I mean, because I don't want to pull these Invisaligners out. You know, when you pull them out, they're slob, and then hands are dirty, and then you get germs in your mouth, and then you could lose them. I can't risk doing that, but I enjoyed going also to Also went to a grocery store, because right now, okay, so it's been a while since we have had baked potatoes. Mm, I think I seen a commercial last night, and I thought about the twice-baked loaded potato, so that's what I have in the oven right now. And yeah, I cannot wait because I'm going to load it up with all, all types of yumminess. Okay, so let's work with this napkin. Okay, you guys, at a thrift store in Vegas, I shared two videos on my thrift and junk hauls from Vegas. I have one more to share. I visited a store and I found not only this roll and I'm not too sure what it is. I have some idea. Well, you know what? It does have a label, and I did look this up. Okay, but anyway, I found this smaller roll of whatever this is, but I also found these 
big, I mean, big rolls of whatever this is. Now, I think what it might be is laminating film. I'm not too sure. And I forget when I look this up. And by the way, it's Cold the Mount Overlam. Well, I thought how else I could use this, right? I know how to use laminating film, but I'm always thinking outside the box. So I've been playing around with this stuff. And what I did, and this is how it looks, it has sticky on this side. It's clear and it's flexible film. So this is how I decided at least one way I would use this. I would apply it over my paper napkin. So, um, you know, I probably should have cut this down first. Now, I'm just gonna apply it over a section, not really paying attention. You know, I wanted to get the, the words, but hey, I'll use that, the negative piece or the leftover piece in a project. So that's what I did, you guys, just as simple as that. Now, you can tear I don't have enough along the edges to tear and give a pretty, give a pretty um, like feathered look, but you could tear you the edges. That there's a thin liner or thin film on the top. Well, just by adding whatever that is, it makes using this, well, it gives durability and strength to a fragile napkin. And now I can take this napkin and treat it like it's a piece of paper or even like fabric. And you'll see that in the video. Now, because I don't know what this is, I cannot tell you guys what to get. And so I was wondering, what do I have in my craft room that's very similar to what this product is? And I had this item, and many of you have it too, well, it's contact paper. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is cut a piece of contact paper and add it to a napkin. And we are going to compare the two together. Now, contact paper you can find locally, though I read on a thread that some people were having a hard time finding this locally peel back uh oh okay there it is peel back the liner you see it's clear too it has adhesive on it and this should cover up an entire section and what's great about it too the contact paper and whatever this is it don't leave any bubbles it applies nice and easy so i'm going to cut this tear it off because I like that feathered, that feathered look. But I want to be careful too because I can get four, four of these from one napkin. And that's a great thing about napkins too. You have the repeat patterns. So you get a lot of usage just from one napkin. Okay, so this is the contact paper, you guys. It's very similar, very similar to whatever this item is now so you're wondering why use the mink machine or a laminator once you send it through it gives a glossy finish versus no heat it remains matte but it goes through really quick and i cannot wait to start to share my techniques ah I'm making textiles, you guys. <laughs> Faux textiles, too. <laughs> and this machine gets hot. I do have it at the uh, number five, and I probably don't need to have it at number five. I tend to just use that. But you want to let it cool off. It just takes several seconds. And, okay. So I used a dirty liner, right? 
So this, uh, it transferred, you know, I'm not going to clean it. I'll use alcohol because, because it's film, you should be able to easily clean it. Okay. So I'm not sure if you can tell that it does look a bit more glossy. Okay. So this was using my film. And I really don't want to experiment too much on camera with this one because you guys, you know, more than likely won't have access to it. So for now on, I'll just work with the contact paper. So let me do, was this contact? I had done this one. No, I don't think so. Okay, well, anyway, you guys get the hang of it, right? By adding contact paper, it turns the napkin into like a piece of paper or a piece of fabric. And this is how the back looks. You could add adhesive on this if you wanted to glue this down to something. Now, you can die cut this. You can actually stitch on this. And I will bring out my um, sewing machine that's right next to me. Um... But yeah, you could do so much with it, right? Treat it just like it's paper. If you guys don't know, contact paper, it comes on a roll like this. I'll just cut a strip off. You use contact paper if you want to laminate. If you want to protect a surface, you use it. I've been using contact paper four years and so this is clear contact paper you can buy contact paper with patterns you know I think I want to use a different napkin let's use this one I found this pack from the thrift store look how pretty that is so 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 pretty okay use some tape so you guys I have been cooking a whole lot I love to cook Last night, I made California sushi. I don't want to say rolls because <laughs> mine didn't quite come out as a roll. It was more like a burrito. I told my daughter and she said, Mom, there's something called Sherito. Wait, uh, Sherito, I think. It's a sushi burrito. And I said, that's exactly what I made then because I didn't have that bamboo mat to roll it. So I improvised <laughs> and came up with a big old sushi burrito. People, oh my goodness, I could not get enough of it. I made my own dressing, dipping sauce. Okay, so this one might, may have had just one layer. Let's see. The other day I made a sushi bowl. We got a butterfish restaurant and oh my goodness i love the california bowl no no raw meat we don't do that but their bowls are so expensive and well it's just my excuse to come home and recreate it i do that quite often we eat at a restaurant and it's really good i will come home and reinvent it and that's what i did with the sushi bowl and it was so good. Oh my goodness, so good. And I had some leftover things and used it to make the California sushi burrito or roll, whatever. And I'm going to make it again tomorrow. So good. Okay, so I think this one just had one layer. You know, but it kind of looks like there might be another layer, but I couldn't pull it apart. Do you guys do that? Do you recreate meals at restaurants? I mean, I'm so bad. I'll ask the waiter for ingredients and I'll have the waiter go back and talk to the chef. <laughs> I have done that. I'm bootleg, you guys. There was a cooking show that I loved and all of a sudden it just stopped playing. Um, I forget the guy's name, but he reminded me of me. He would actually dumpster dive at restaurants in their garbage cans to find out what ingredients they used. And he would recreate whatever that dish was. And he has recreated. He, I think he was called the copycat something. Okay, one layer. That's all because it's tearing up. 
I hate that he's not on TV anymore. But I found a recipe by him. Okay, I, I love Applebee's, but not as much anymore because they don't carry my favorite salad, which was called the Santa Fe Southwestern Salad. Every time we ate there, no matter what city we were in, I ordered the same thing. Went there a couple years ago and found out it, you know, they discontinued it. I went to one Applebee's and the chef still knew how to make it, so he made it for me. Though the chicken wasn't done the way it was originally done. Well, I found a copycat recipe by this guy. His name is Todd, the one who had the cooking show. And let me tell you, made that. <laughs> so it's a staple in my kitchen. It tastes better than the original salad. And it involves a lot of steps. You marinate your own meat. You grill it. Um, you make your own guacamole. And so it's just from scratch. Everything about it is from scratch. And it is so worth it. Okay, you guys. So I have this beautiful napkin. And I'm going to peel back the contact paper. So if you guys have recreated dishes that you like, share that below. So I started recreating dishes, I think in 1997. We used to have a chain grocery store called Albertsons. And they had a dish that was, I think it was just called like, pesto, um, pasta, something like that. And I absolutely loved it. Always went there to buy it. And one day I went and it had been discontinued. And I had a fit. I couldn't believe it. Well, I had eaten it so much. I had an eye. Well, of course I knew what was in it. And I had never made a pasta salad before. I went home, of course I prayed, because I loved that dish that much. <laughs> I had to pray. I went home and recreated that dish, and people, let me tell you, if I entered that in a pasta contest, I would win. So I used no to lie. be a part of a committee, an organization that put on block parties, and not just block parties, but community parties. And this organization consisted of police officers, um, business owners, teachers, whoever, anybody could be a part of it. And little old me was a part of it. And I loved it. One thing I was known for, I had a balloon booth. I would rent the helium tanks and I had all different colors of balloons and things like that. And I would pass them out free to the kids. It was really fun. I hope, I know I took pictures back then. Oh my goodness, bringing back so many memories. But, um... I recreated that pasta dish and I mean I made like four or five of those big turkey pans those aluminum bakers full of pasta of this dish that I had recreated and let me tell you when I say I am not exaggerating but I just remember like flashes of the those who attended the party when they found me, they would tell me, oh my goodness, I walked everywhere looking for your booth. I guess they would ask people who had the dish where they got it from people and they would get on and on and on about how good this dish was. The Asian population, I uh, love it. That's one thing I learned. Now, any and everybody loved it, but a lot of Asians in particular loved it because I guess you and could I taste some garlic. Asian cuisine they use a lot of garlic and it wasn't overly garlic i mean it was the right balance of everything i used i had so many people asking for the recipe and not just there i made it for other parties i attended let me tell you once again if i was to enter this recipe in a pasta contest i without a shadow of a doubt would win now i have not made this in a couple years can you believe that but that started my journey of recreating foods and dishes that I would eat nope. at a restaurant or out and about. Okay, so this is the piece that I just made and it has a matte, I'm not sure if you guys could tell, but you know, it, it has a matte feel versus 
this one that looks more glossy. Can you see a difference in the camera? So you have an option. You don't need to use your laminator. You can. Okay, so what Stitchy. else can we do with but these? I'll just use the regular foot using a regular needle and I'm using regular thread. And it's really simple. I'm going slow. It can be a bit slippery if you use other stitches. But the straight stitch, oh, you know what? Actually, this is a different stitch. This is not a straight stitch. Well, you see how well it's doing. Okay. No problems, right? It's not slipping. And I'm just doing this at random. So cool. Okay. Alrighty, so take a look at that. So I used stitch number nine. Can you see the design of that stitch? Sorry for the glare, you guys. This is beautiful. I love it. Now we can also die oh, cut tattered florals. And this is still not large enough. Oh, you know what? If I hold it still, it'll cover the whole thing. All right. <clears throat> using two B pleats, one pass, one pass. So, um, yeah, I went to Kaiser last week. I encourage you guys get your annual checkups. You know, us ladies, we gotta, as we get older, we gotta get our mammograms. Make sure you up to date on your pap smear. So I was so happy to have taken care of that. Why is this? Okay. I'm at an odd angle, you guys. Yeah, I took care of that. I had forgotten. Those mammograms, oh my goodness. They squeeze the life out of you. Man. I don't know how I could have forgot that. Boy. If I wasn't flat before, let me tell you, after they squeeze... <laughs> It don't seem like they'll ever be plump again. I'm like, man. But thank God. Thank God, you know, got that over with. Okay. So take a look at this, you guys. Ah. It reminds me of like a, a, a wax type feel. But it's smooth, though. Oh. So we have taken our paper napkins to the next level. Take a look at that, right? Oh my goodness. So if you cannot find paper in a pattern you like, perhaps you can find napkins in that pattern. Now you can do so much more, right? Let me show you a piece. I don't think I showed you guys all the pieces I did before. Feel me. Well, this is one small piece. Do you see the texture? I used embossing, an embossing folder on this. So let me show you how easy that is to do. And you need the C plate, a C and a B plate for this sandwich to cut out with the steel roll dies. You just need two B plates. Did I say this one? Kind of getting confused, kind of getting confused. Okay. You know, let's just do this one. Okay, so I'm gonna stick my, I'm not sure what to call these. I think I had a name and I forgot what it was, but by the end of this video, I'll remember. Okay, and where's my C plate? Okay, need a C plate. Just put it in. Roll it through. Ouch. Oh, darn. That happened to you guys? What did I do wrong? Is this not the right sandwich? Oh, no. I don't think I need a C plate. That's for wafer thin dyes. 
Woo! That hit that finger right there. Boy. Man. Okay, so is it two B plates then? I forgot. I guess so. Man. Alrighty. Let's see if that worked. Oh, yep. Two B plates with these embossing folders. And take a look at that, you guys. Oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful. This folder came from Tuesday morning. Unfortunately, there's no name on it. Oh, it is so pretty. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you guys, there's more. Okay, so my son is bringing the alcohol down because I do need alcohol for this next technique. But this is so pretty. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I apologize for my slur, for my lisp. Um, I'm wearing Invisaligners and last night I switched out uh, my old pair for a new pair. And boy, that was really uncomfortable last night. It really has a tight, a tight... Um, fit right now and so yeah i'll be wearing these okay you guys because this is film we can use our alcohol markers right and tuesday morning just had a excellent value on spectrum nor markers if i didn't have a lot already i would have definitely picked some up but if you want to accentuate an area well you can use your alcohol marker. Um, there's not really much I want to do. Well, you know, I'll just color in that O right there. Okay, so this color is too light. Let's do a darker color. We will have to experiment. So do you see that color I put there? I see it. It's a pink color. The cool thing about working with alcohol markers on film, if you don't like it, you can use alcohol to erase it. I'm going to do that right now. And look, it's on this baby wipe and off my piece. So cool, right? But I think I want to leave that alcohol there. You know, why not do a, a deeper, deeper color? Let's see. <laughs> oh, look at that love it love it love it love it okay you guys so i think i think that'll do it i cannot think of what i called these let me look at my notes fabric wax napkins no that don't sound right right i don't know what i'm gonna call these but this technique, you guys, will give you so many different options and ways to incorporate your paper napkins in your projects. If you have been inspired by my creativity, why not give me a thumbs up? Go ahead and like this video and you would want to subscribe if you are. Well, it's a continuation of my laminating series. You guys, I'm making textiles, right? <laughs> Have so much planned to come your way. So go ahead and subscribe. Feel free to adopt any of my ideas. I only ask for proper credits. Do give shout outs and do link back to this tutorial. Well, I want to thank you all for watching. As always, blessings.